Hello and welcome back to another new edition of Windows and Current Affairs. And today, uh, of course, we're going to embark on a very important topic that brings joy, that brings pride. And, uh, of course, uh, it's an, a very optimistic uh, piece of news, uh, especially to people in health sector and to Egyptians at large. Uh, the news is, uh, well, of course, it's becoming uh, uh, old news to everybody who is uh, living in Egypt, as, uh, of course, Egypt is registered among the top countries uh, that achieved the golden tier status on its path to the elimination of hepatitis C. Of course, uh, this would enable Egypt to uh, be able to be free from hepatitis C once and for all, curing almost 90% of the patients uh, in the past uh, three or four years or five years. That would enable Egypt to go to a whole new level. We're going to be talking about that in detail. How did Egypt and Egyptian doctors and the people in the health sector, of course, monitored by the government? and by uh, the f continuous uh, and uh, very intense follow-up uh, by the president himself uh, uh, directing some presidential campaigns also to boost and empower uh, that uh, continuous effort. We're going to be talking about that in full detail and we're very delighted to be uh, having uh, uh, with us uh, uh, someone who uh, could talk to us uh, in a better way about that particular piece of news, Dr. Islam Ainan, lecturer of uh, pharmacy economics uh, and health policy. And uh, of course, this is very good news, Dr. Ainan. Let us first uh, talk about the origin uh, or the foundation of that huge step, that mega step taken by the Egyptians. It's not only by the health sector, we believe. Yes, I totally agree. First of all, thank you, and it's always a pleasure to be in Windows. Oh, really pleasure. Thank you, Ms. Dina. And actually, um, it's exactly like what you were saying in the introduction. Mm. It's, it brings a lot of joy. It's unprecedented. It's the first mm. time that a country to achieve a gold tier in mm. the elimination of chronic hepatitis C. And it's actually a demonstration of the using of the right tools to screen, diagnose, mm. treat, follow up, and achieving a good clinical outcome. And the story actually began in 2014 or even before 2014 when we thought of how can we eliminate the burden we are having as Egyptian citizens from chronic hepatitis C, mm. either clinically on the person himself or economically on the country. And mm. we are talking about a silent disease. Unfortunately, 80% of any hepatitis C uh, disease patients will live unaware that they have the disease itself. So we are talking mm. about 80% of people having hepatitis C, they have the virus, they don't know, and they Completely unaware? Of completely the unaware, there is mm. no symptoms, and suddenly they discover when it's too late, and it's becoming with a, a high prognosis and a lot of manifestations, Mm. a severe case and sometimes and many times uh, it goes on to liver cirrhosis sometimes for liver cancer because mm. of the late diagnosis very another, dangerous yes and another aspect we mm. were actually uh, having a lot of burden from people who would like to travel abroad and work in the gulf areas in europe and so on and they only discover they got the virus when they are finishing their documents for the work permit before they travel. So mm. imagine someone... Through the test? Through the final test before traveling. Mm. So for example, w we've seen it a lot. Uh, students who graduated do a first interview for a Dubai job, for example. Mm. Second interview, third, and he's, he got accepted. He's very happy. He's trying to prepare his documents to travel. So he's going to work there. And at the final step, they discover it. He discovers that he got hepatitis C. Mm. And all his dreams are actually now... Aborted. Vanished. Yes, aborted. We're mm. not going to be able to travel ever again, even if treated. We had Why? another... Why is that? Because unfortunately, uh, most of the Gulf countries, they refuse anyone to work there if they got a positive antibodies for the virus. A former positive, but what? He is cured. Still, still so far, even mm. if cured, their body will have antibodies. Mm. It's like COVID. We have antibodies after recovery mm. and they test only for antibodies and once mm. there is antibodies they refuse the visa. 
And currently, the Ministry of Health is communicating with the uh, GCC Health Council to try to erase and change a little bit or amend mm. the uh, terms and conditions so they can accept again recovered cases or healed cases from hepatitis C. And there is another burden we had uh, 10 years ago, which is the cost of treatment. Mm. One patient to take a treatment for hepatitis C, the antiviral itself, it costed around 100K, 100,000 Egyptian pounds. And we are talking at 2010, 2011, 2000, till 2014, which is a very high cost. Mm. And the success rate and the response rate was around 50%. So it's a mm. very expensive medication per patient. The response rate and the Not success rate. Not everybody can afford it, especially the yes. low income bracket. E even from government perspective, a mm. lot of patients were covered, but still the response rate was 50%. 50% response is very low percentage with a very high actually adverse events. Till 2014, mm. which is a turnaround for the full story. Mm. Uh, there's a committee, the committee for the hepatic uh, viruses and diseases. They decided to negotiate on the Sovaldi case. And all of mm. us, we remember what happened in the Sovaldi case. Mm. We took it here in Egypt uh, by the procurement departments by 1% of its global price. And that was the first step towards having a good plan for eradication. Because mm. currently we are treating one case with 3,000 Egyptian pounds. 3,000. Mm. We're talking from 100,000 to 3,000. And at 2018, at the 100 Healthy Lives Presidential Initiative, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi announced the launch of the presidential initiative mm. to eliminate hepatitis C in three years, to mm. identify, early detect, screen Egyptian citizens for hepatitis C and then treat it. And since mm. the launch, and actually with the political will and the support we had from the presidential office and President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, mm. the 100 Health Lives started to target 65 million Egyptian citizens. They want to mm. actually screen 65 millions. And that was a very ambitious target. It's very hard to reach almost mm. most of the adult population. And for that, a good policy framework was actually designed. You need to prepare for resources, for a lot of processes to change the to whole healthcare structure. To be able to stand up to this change. Yes. But before we get into that, uh, of course we can figure from what you're so kindly elaborated on that the presidential, the health presidential campaigns were the uh, first solid foundation that created uh, that path of success. We, can, uh, we can't help but give him credit. But at the same time, we need to know, we normal people need to know, uh, are there any symptoms that you can notice for, a peop for someone who might be diagnosed by hepatitis C? Another question, is it infectious? And if it's infectious, uh, how can we be able to uh, protect ourselves? I mean, there must be rules or precautions or any type of information mm -hmm. so that yes. uh, we can, uh, um, I mean, prevent it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. So if we could embark yes. over this particular So it, it's a very good question because it started with the infectious part. Mm. It's very infectious and it infects through blood. Mm. And the breakthrough of hepatitis C and why in Egypt we do have the highest prevalence of hepatitis C worldwide, it's because of the campaign we had for bilharizia, bilharziasis. Mm. And because the injection uh, routine and the injection regimens we had doesn't involve a safety aseptic injection and people were even donating blood without testing for hepatitis C because we, we didn't know back then that there is a hepatitis that C. That was when? Back then 30 that was, years? Yeah, no, no, more than for 30 mm. years as well. So uh, hepatitis C virus was transmitted mm. through blood bags, through mm. injection and still was infectious even through blood during shaving if someone is actually shaving at the dentists, barber shop, example. dentists, mm. and if we are not following a good uh, regimen of hygiene and aseptic conditions at barber shops, especially countryside, mm. and at dentist clinics, we'll continue having this infection from a patient to another patient and so on. 
And mm. that's why the first the rule of thumb of preventing hepatitis C before mm. the presidential initiative and before having the screening is to make sure that we don't have any dental clinic with the virus. We do mm. have an autoclave to actually make sure it's an aseptic tools. We're not using tools from one person to another. Same for the barber shops in the countryside and in all uh, places that we can actually... That means that we, have, we should have some type of surveillance by the government from other sectors in the, of the government. Yes, and, and mm. that's how we mm. actually got the prevalence. When we mentioned that 7% mm. of the adult population of Egypt had the virus, mm. that was actually from the surveillance, from the research. And 7% is actually huge. This is the highest country worldwide prevalence for hepatitis C. And we knew it because of the surveillance, the epidemiological surveillance across all the governorates. For example, in Kafr sheikh itself, only Kafr sheikh there was one million case. So it's a very huge, that's, a, uh, to tell you the percentages, worldwide we only have 65 millions infected people with hepatitis C. In mm. Egypt we had like 5, 5.5 5 millions, only Egypt. So mm. it was the highest country. And mm. once we stopped the uh, use of tool inside barber shops, dental clinics, and we actually uh, tried to enforce the hygiene and better hygiene in terms of the primary care clinics, in terms of using a tool from a patient to a healthy individual, the incidence started to drop. However, the response rate and trying to uh, having the better in as a patient in a better condition was not mm. that good because of the treatment. The treatment was a 50% success. Very costly. And very costly. Mm. And uh, to achieve it, you need good financial resources. You're not going to be able to do have good financial resources having the treatment per patient exceeding 100,000 Egyptian pounds. Mm. And uh, starting 2018, when they started, they put all this in mind. The preventive thing, which is we are trying to do an awareness campaigns, educational campaigns to all healthcare professionals, mm. to all the blood uh, banks. Of course, they are currently screening all patients donating blood for hepatitis C and HIV. Uh, of uh, course, IV, because of this course. is the root cause. For exactly. For the and we need to treat and stop infection for the current cases. For the current cases, and because the target is to screen around 60 millions, which is a, a high target, mm. you must do it a multi-channel communication approach. So they started the presidential initiative office in the Ministry of Health and with the support of the Department of Public Health there and the Minister of Health, Dr. Khaled Abdullah Afar, and all the ministers before him. They started to put the campaign in the primary care clinics. So any patients entering the primary care will test for hepatitis C. Mm. The 100 healthy lives were mobile uh, across all the governorates and countryside mm. through uh, caravans and health caravans so patients can actually measure blood pressure. Mm. They can uh, check in and get... Yeah, uh, check in for mm. diabetes, blood uh, sugar and make the HCV tests. Even through media, TV, through internet, they started to make a big awareness campaign that go test for free, it's for free, it's for your blood pressure, for your diabetes, and for HCV. It's not only HCV. Mm. So y you decrease the taboo of Egyptians if you're only going to say, go test for HCV. So mm. it's a less tension in that way. Mm. And actually, in 18 months, the Egyptian government and the Minister of Health reached 63 million Egyptian in only citizens. 18 months? In 18 months. We stayed for t almost 30 years. We couldn't do yeah. anything in 18 months. Typical President Abdel Fattah Sisi's uh, exactly. system. Yes, yes. Even right. before the due date, the due date was actually 2.5 years. Mm. And that was the first step. It's okay. amazing. Yes, mm. it, it's amazing. It, it's a one of success stories and actually mm. it's the highest screening Not too many ever. people know that, by the way. Uh, and and hence we are here, I guess, talking uh, yeah, about amazing. it. Amazing. Yes. It's magical yeah. because Sometimes, I mean, people are criticizing sometimes, uh, especially the ministry, the ministry of Health, and mm. uh, I mean, asking for more elaboration, for more effort to be spent, especially at uh, pandemic times than ever, just like any other country. But, but nobody takes from his time to find out that we, could, we were able to eliminate the virus in only 18 months, mm. and at the time we stayed for 30 years or more, maybe 60. Yes, right? you, you decreased the prevalence from mm. having a 7% to having 0.38%. Mm. 
So it's almost none. It's almost b below 0.5% as well. So uh, ha having said that, and a lot of success story actually is in mm. the hepatitis C because we are talking about thousands of healthcare professionals, mm. either for screening, we are talking and vision about... Also. Yeah, the, the good thing about any presidential initiative, if you want it to succeed, is to have a very clear key performance indicators and vision. Mm. Having outcomes, uh, having uh, key success factors, and you mm. can be, and you'll be able to measure the success and quantify it. This is very important. I have Which milestones, right. very clear cutoff points for milestones. Right. Which leads <coughs> us to the policy framework. We were yeah. talking before the episode, and you uh, referred to the fact that policy framework is the foundation of anything. Once there is a policy framework, everything uh, is going to be achieved even before its due time. And everyone would know his mission. I mean, his assignment. Exactly. Yes. Sectors are assignment <coughs> assigned by certain missions, and they have to execute it, and it becomes so uh, organized. So, if you'd like to talk to us about sure, the yeah, policy framework, to have a, a good plan, you have you need to have a good policy framework, exactly as you mentioned. Mm. And in what sense? Uh, to build a policy framework and to make it simple, mm. it means that you have a clear strategy on what you want to achieve through the presidential initiative. Mm. The multidisciplinary team assigned to the presidential initiative wrote, wrote down what they need from resources perspective, for example. Mm. And from resources, it means that the policy framework must define the human resources we need for success. Mm. We need to train the healthcare professionals, the physicians, on how to diagnose, on how to read results. We need to train nurses, we need to train individuals who are going to just take the key demographics of the patients and register them on the system. Mm. We need as well a good technological resources. We need a good IT infrastructure. Mm. Hence, uh, there were uh, a platform implemented for the presidential initiative where patients can actually put their contact detail and then they will receive a contact SMS message to go and make the lab test. Mm. They will go for confirmatory test starting uh, if they are positive mm. to take the treatment or another uh, actually platform. And the central location in the Ministry of Health will be able to aggregate data, generate insights, and they can track cases day after day. We need as well for resources, a good financial resources. Mm. We need to have a very good tools in terms of medications. And hence, uh, Egypt started to communicate with the local plans here in Egypt to mm. manufacture all the treatments to be made in Egypt. Mm. And that was another actually uh, news to celebrate that all the treatment for hepatitis C is actually locally manufactured by Egyptian manufacturers. And the screening tools, we need to purchase screening tools with the most efficient price, the diagnostic procedures and the monitoring tools as well. But the medication was manufactured. The, manuf the medications, all of it, 100% of medications were actually locally manufactured by Egyptians. So this is the first time in Egyptian history that we manufacture this hepatitis C medicine, right? Uh, after Sovaldi, exactly after Sovaldi. Before mm -hmm. Sovaldi, there was no Egyptian medications. It was all except for a very minor production from a local company. Mm -hmm. And it was not that successful. And that's after why Sovaldi, it was a big It was, a it was big very hassle. expensive, big mm -hmm. hassle. After Sovaldi, a couple of months, in less than one year, the Egyptian manufacturers started to manufacture mm -hmm. the medications, which is same efficacy like the so value. We are talking about medications with a 97 to 98 percent success, which mm. is a very high percentage. Amazing. And once you do have the resources of financial, we, we mentioned human resources, we mentioned financial resources, technological resources, we do have currently the diagnostic. Uh, the treatment, the monitoring tools, you need to have a good processes. Mm. And that's the second thing in any policy framework. How can I make sure that the patients are going from their homes or the subjects to get screened, to be screened? If positive, how are they going to actually go to start their treatment? And if they're going to go to start their treatment, you need to make sure that they complete the course of treatment and there is a positive outcome. Mm. Hence, you do need a call center and a call center was established. We're going to call the patients to follow up. All these steps are done. And if the patient drop out and he didn't go to get his treatment, they're going to call him. And mm -hmm. that actually happened. And tell them, please, you do have a dose. The treatment is for free, everything for free. Make sure that you continue your medications. 
to make sure that you eradicate the virus from your body. And after the call center, they receive all the treatment and their data will be on the system. And hence, the most important part in the policy framework is the outcome. Mm -hmm. How can I make sure that I do have a good research infrastructure that I can track the clinical outcome and make sure that I am actually tracking and mm -hmm. tracing every single patient on the system itself to make sure that I reach it a success factor which is beyond the benchmark I'm actually seeking. And talking about that, you mentioned the gold tier, for example. The, the the before the golden tier or the gold tier, uh, are we talking about monitoring around like not 100 million, but 90 million, uh, the population? I mean, talking to people? Uh, we actually, the Egyptian government screened 63 million 63 million 63 million so citizens. targeting 63 million talking to them over the phone and following you, them you, you will not talk to all of them because if the patient or the subject is completely healthy mm. and he's far beyond the virus it's okay he w they will be actually sent but until home. we could find out we have and to talk to all of them uh, we screened all of them. Oh, we screened but all we of called them. Mm. we the identified identified from the 63 4.1 million Mm. There was 4.1. Which is a hefty number. Yeah, yeah of mm. course it's a hefty number. And 4.1 is huge because you need 4 million people to make sure that they are receiving their treatment, of they course. complete the course of treatment, and you do have a positive outcome. And mm. uh, if any patient of them will drop out of treatment, you need to recall them from the call center. So the call center were calling the dropout of uh, patients from the treatment mm. itself. Yeah. But all of them, the 4 million, they were on the online platform, on the digital platform. Mm. And from the digital platform, you can take another vital and important clinical data, which is maybe these patients are going through a liver cirrhosis. Mm. And, uh, is that related to the same? Uh, I yes. mean, is, is it a, uh, a side effect? It's oh. a deterioration of the case itself, ah, okay. being a late diagnosed. Because, mm. you know, the, it's a viral hepatitis. Mm. Uh, it's affecting the liver. And the, li mm. and the liver can be actually deteriorated more to reach a level of cirrhosis. Mm. And cirrhosis is more like failure. And after that, it can be actually a liver cancer, hepatocellular carcinoma, what we call an HCC. Mm. And to make sure that we are not only treating HCV, but also the complications and the consequence of the HCV, Another presidential initiative was actually launched only for liver cancer. Talking and calling all the patients that are eligible for the screening, having liver cirrhosis, mm. or having anything in the liver, to screen for liver cancer. And mm. if diagnosed with liver cancer, they will be put on another treatment campaign. So this was the, the stage two? That was stage two of the campaign. And mm. uh, the campaign identified 60,000 patients with liver cancer that they need treatment. Mm. They were not going to be discovered if there is no presidential initiative. Of course. We would have left 60,000 Egyptian people living with liver cancer who will actually uh, diagnose or discover at a very late stage, a mm. stage when treatment were not going to be Which would have effective. affected the initial campaign, the, the hepatitis C, which means that uh, the planning is very important. It's even uh, equally important to the health plan. Yes, uh, without planning, mm. you don't know where you're heading. Mm. You don't have a clear vision. So your milestones... You drop some uh, you're gonna uh, issues. You're going to drop the success factors. Mm. Success factors. So, for example, the gold tier you mentioned in the introduction yeah, oh, is a success... Let's talk about the gold tier. Is a success factor. Mm. Is a target. Mm. So, in order to measure your success, you need to have a target. WHO put a target to countries. If, you would like, if a country would like to eradicate virus C, Mm. what we call a gold tier, a silver tier, and a bronze tier. Gold tier, it means any country who can achieve 80% screening mm. and achieve 70% treatment. Mm. We actually, in Egypt, we achieved 87% screening. Almost 90. Almost 90, and we mm. achieved 94% treatment. Mm. So we are talking about even standards higher than the gold tier identified by the WHO. And uh, not in our, anybody's, any country's wildest dreams. They could have reached that in only 18 months. Yes, exactly. And right. to tell you uh, about the gold tier, we are the first country to get it. 
the first country. No other country worldwide took the gold tier so far. So uh, the WHO and uh, the WHO Director General uh, mm. mentioned that Egypt is actually a, a standard case study to other countries. They, wa is a, they would like to eradicate virus as well, that mm. they can adapt they the policy framework. The exper Egyptian experience. Exactly. You can adapt the policy framework that Egypt did to another country. And hence, for example, Africa is trying currently to uh, mimic or do a similar program. And we are helping uh, African countries through another presidential uh, campaign. You which is also talked about uh, another effort or another uh, third stage. I mean, after we have uh, um, uh, took that leap uh, in that particular domain, we turned to, to our brothers in Africa and another campaign was launched. Yes, treating one million African uh, from hepatitis C is another presidential campaign. Mm. We are talking about a campaign targeting African countries mm -hmm. where Egypt can help by uh, screening uh, procedures and protocols by the processes itself mm. and help by medications. We currently produce the cheapest and uh, with a similar quality medications for hepatitis C. So we can have a good trade in that. In the training and the capacity building and capability building mm. uh, to, know, to transfer the technology and our knowledge in terms of elevating the capacity of early detection, how do we make screening, how we encourage citizens to go and actually get their screening for free. Mm. For example, there's a lot of tricks, like I was mentioning, don't just tell people there's a hepatitis C screening, they were not going to go. But mm. it is, it's a healthy check, you're going to go test your hypertension, test your diabetes, mm. and your hepatitis C or liver function. Uh, put it mandatory in terms of legal paperwork, when they're going to finish their legal paperwork. Just put a clinic where they need a certificate mm. that you are clear from virus C that's before completing a, your documents. That's an for amazing example. idea also. So a lot of ideas were made that mm. you can uh, teach and uh, transfer to another countries. And this campaign actually succeeded and it was declared with the results during the Africa Excon conference early this June 2023. Mm. Uh, and of course, like we earlier talked uh, about, which is the presidential follow-up. I mean, that particular, I mean, the foundation of all that, uh, I mean, uh, mm, story of success was taken by the president himself. Uh, he directed the uh, presidential campaign to start to monitor, and you uh, went on with the rest of the story. Uh, but then uh, there, w there, w there was a, a sincere and precise follow-up by the president. Yeah, that's With correct. That and, uh, and we remember. We can all notice during yeah. the conferences yeah. and even during the last conference, the President Sisi was actually asking on the campaign yeah. and he was following up the figures and numbers. And when the launch even of the campaign uh, happened, it was a pres by the president of the Fatah Sisi that it was the main aim of the Egyptian country that we would like Egyptians to have better health. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about treating patients. We're talking about trying to make Egyptians of better health. They're not going to be patients anymore. And mm -hmm. hence the vision 2030 of health was emerged. It was emerged as a people centric, not patient centric. We would like people to be more healthy, mm -hmm. uh, having more preventive measures. Mm -hmm. And hence, for example, we have as well a smoking cessation campaign, uh, a healthy diet campaign. Mm. These campaigns are not targeting a disease. It's targeting a prevention or enhancing the immunity of the Egyptians. Mm. So they were not going to have uh, diseases anymore in the future, like hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, which is the number one cause of death, for example, for Egyptians. Mm. And we can even mm. uh, notice that the gold tier itself, it was handed to the president of Fatah Sisi himself because he was leading the campaign. Mm. The buy-in is a very important aspect in any public health initiative. It's very important. Without mm. political will and without political support from the president, mm. it would be very hard to put all the resources of the country to serve one goal. Yes. For hepatitis C, you need the Minister of Health, but not only the Minister of Health. We need all the other ministries, the Minister of Education, Higher mm. Education, the Minister of Planning. Minister of Communication and Technology. The Minister of Communication was actually mm. uh, giving the platform for mm. the digital platform. 
and we need as well uh, a lot of effort from authorities. We need an effort from the Unified Procurement Authority, from the Egyptian Drug Authority, from the uh, planning Bihar and Authority, development. planning and development. So we are talking about a multi-sectorial mm. efforts as well as uh, uh, international organizations like the UN agencies and the WHO. Mm. So putting all these authorities and ministries all together to come with one vision and one goal and you, we can see them working in 18 months to achieve the goal, it needs a centralized mind mm. to put a clear vision to all that you all need to work on these key performance indicators in a good timetable and I need to see success every three months or six months to make sure that I'm going towards the right path. And that was actually happened during the HCV. Right. We're going to be continuing on that story or success story uh, that Egypt has achieved in only 18 months, but right after this short break, so stay with us. Welcome back, uh, and we're still with uh, Dr. Islam Ainan, lecturer of pharmaceuticals and uh, health uh, policy. And Dr. Ainan, uh, it feels great, and it feels a lot of pride we as Egyptians when we talk about uh, ourselves. I mean, we are sectors. I mean, we are the media sectors. You are health sector, and uh, there is the presidential sector, and uh, like you kindly mentioned, the other sectors. It's a great achievement. No other country could be was was able uh, amongst the power balanced countries and uh, you know power countries, developed countries, all yes. that they couldn't achieve it. So uh, it's a real story of success. And when we talk about it, we should also talk about it uh, from all uh, I mean sides of the story. Like you kindly uh, is is elaborating right now, talking about this campaign. Uh, after this uh, step or successful step, probably there are other, the story didn't end at that level. There are other, uh, um, I mean, successful uh, steps that should be taken. What are these steps? Yes, and uh, just to second what you are saying, mm. uh, it is a success story that all of us need to be proud of, especially the multi-sectorial, especially the teamwork happened. We're talking about thousands of uh, healthcare professionals, thousands mm. of administrative personnel working all together. And uh, it put us on the right pathway towards having a better preventive health and mm. medicine and better health for all Egyptians. And it's not only about hepatitis C and it's not only about uh, liver cancer campaigns. We're talking about 14 presidential initiatives for health. And most of them are targeting the same story, mm. targeting the Egyptian citizen from birth till senior years. We're talking about presidential initiative for genetic disorders for newborns, about hearing testing for the newborns, mm. for all the uh, school children, uh, anemia, stunting with a short stature, and obesity, obesity for example. Yeah. We're talking about uh, even nutrition strategy for the youth. Uh, non-communicable diseases like hypertension, diabetes, and cholesterol. We're talking about uh, breast cancer and women mm. health, mm. all oncology and cancer presidential initiative. We're talking even about uh, uh, mental health presidential initiative and autism. We're mm. talking about the first 1,000 days of the uh, child time and for senior year. So we are actually taking the journey of the Egyptian uh, citizen Mm. and trying to make a lot of preventive presidential campaigns to promote better health. And for each milestone or for each uh, pillar in his life, we would like to promote a good health strategy. Eat better, move more, try to avoid bad habits, try to have better health, and you will have less consequence in the future. You will have less cardiovascular attacks. You will have less hypertension uh, incidents among the Egyptian citizens and that's what gonna lead us to the main aim you mentioned a very important thing in the beginning which mm. is the clear vision what's our vision the vision and the 2030 vision is better health for all Egyptians the vision was not to treat patients it's not about having more hospitals mm. having more hospitals or treating patients it's a good cause but having healthy individuals, mm. it's always better. 
having a citizen who doesn't have to go to a hospital of is course. better than having a hospital. Of course. And it's not an easy task. It's, it's a, a better very, plan. I mean, it's a better plan, but mm, it's a very modern planning. Uh, far fetched and it's hard to achieve, of course, than uh, being just a patient centric. And it needs a high infrastructure that you need to split the uh, uh, Ministry of Health from all the burden of the administrative burden and focus only on that. And that's why you will find that the Ministry of Health currently is mainly focusing on public health, focusing on health policy, focusing on the presidential initiative. And for example, all the uh, drug registration pricing and so on went to the Egyptian Drug Authority, moved mm -hmm. out from the Ministry of Health. All the procurements moved from the Ministry of Health and you have now the Unified Procurement Authority. The quality and accreditation moved to another authority. So now That's you have good better gov governance. Mm. You have better governance, better focus, that the main aim of the Ministry of Health is not administration and bureaucratic anymore directions. The main aim is promote health, execute the 14 presidential initiative, and even it's going to be more presidential initiatives, till you reach by 2030 having a universal coverage for all Egyptians mm. and better health indicators. By health indicators, I mean the incidence of diseases will be less because you are promoting mm. better health. Mm. Will decrease. And at the same time, we, would le we wouldn't be in need for more hospitals. Ah, yes, uh, if you achieve a better health, of course, of course, you would have you, hospitals. You will balance, you will balance mm. your need. You will balance, balance your yes. need to hospitals. Yes. That's a yes. better phrase. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, we ran out of time, but uh, we feel a lot of uh, pride yeah. talking about only, only one success story. Uh, but, but we would hope that we could, could continue to cover the rest of the success stories on a promise uh, from you that we uh, could... It's always a pleasure. Uh, yeah. It's a real pleasure to be able to uh, explore together this or take a flashback into the all the steps of uh, the, this success story and, uh, uh, I mean, reflect it to the viewer because uh, it, it, it is very, very optimistic to talk about. I mean, Dr. Uh, Islam, and then you're a lecturer of pharmaceutical economics and uh, health uh, policy. We'd like to thank you, sir, so much. Wish My you the best pleasure. of luck. Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure. Uh, our real pleasure. And I guess this brings us to the end of this edition of Windows and Current Affairs. Many thanks to all of you. Until you see you again next week, that's a goodbye. <laughs>